I want to read you something, uh, a portion of something that that I wrote, uh, I don't know, maybe three years ago, something like that. As you know, as I've shared on numerous occasions back in 2015, I... I lost everything and hurt a lot of people in the process. Uh, at 42 years old, I broke my life, I broke my family, and I broke the hearts of those who trusted me and looked to me for leadership. It was a cataclysmic crash and burn. And uh, I sent this note to a friend the night my granddad died in 2018. In 2018, three years after uh, my crash and burn, my, my granddad died. And because he was as well known as he was, there were tributes for a week on television and in print talking about the impact that he made. Tributes from uh, people all over the world, world leaders. Um, and it was, it was the best week of television in my life. I loved, I was as close as we were, I was reacquainted with his life in his death. And hearing the things that people were saying about him and, and the accolades that he was getting, which he would have been very uncomfortable with, by the way. He didn't like that stuff at all. But it was just, I felt so honored that God was gracious enough to put me in this family. I was honored, I was humbled by it. And through heaving tears, I sent this note to a friend the night my granddad died in 2018. Watching my grandfather's life being celebrated by the world, it has hit me all over again just how selfish I was, how much I squandered. And for what? What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Character matters. It does not gain us favor with God, but it does give us credibility with others so that we can deliver God's favor to the world. I blew it. I'm undone. I sent that text to a friend. I was just bawling. And calling to mind David's adultery with Bathsheba and the subsequent murder of her husband Uriah, my friend responded to that text I sent him with six words. There was a man named David. That's all he said. That's all he said. I lost it. <laughs> you can ask Stacy. I came in from the, the patio and I was just like bawling. She's like, what in the world? What's going on with you? And I read her what I wrote to my friend and his response, so true, so right. The words I needed to hear in that very moment, the reminder I needed in that very moment. He had the perfect words at just the right time. It was the comforting reminder that I needed in that moment that God loves and uses people who are weak and fail because people who are weak and fail are all that there are. And I'm just guessing that you may need that reminder too. Yes, there was a man named David, but even more comforting is the good news that there is a man named Jesus. Unlike my grandfather, I soiled my record. There will be people who hear my name 20 years from now and all they'll remember is my worst moment. Regardless of how I live my life from this point forward, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I've accepted that. Um, unlike Daddy Bill, that's what we called him, I, I soiled my record, but I believe that if Daddy Bill were still alive, he'd say something like this to me. Tullian, I may not be guilty externally of the same sins you are, but I assure you that my heart is no less sinful than yours. According to God's standard of perfection, I'm a failure just like you. All our records are stained with sin, but the good news of the gospel is that Jesus' perfect record is ours by faith. When God looks at our account, he doesn't see all our nasty withdrawals. Rather, he sees all of Christ's perfect deposits. In fact, the Bible makes it clear that because of Jesus, the sins we can't forget, God doesn't remember. So take heart, failed one. Before God, the righteousness of Christ is all we need. Before God, the righteousness of Christ is all that we have. That righteousness beyond propriety, okay, that scandalous gift of God, speaks louder than any voice 
of internal or external accusation. You know, someone used this illustration or gave me this illustration a number of years ago um, <clears throat> that the gospel is so much better than just our sins being forgiven. I mean, that's a beautiful part of the gospel, obviously. Picture yourself going into the bank. You're massively in debt, okay? You're $5 million in debt, and you have no way of paying it back. No way. And you go to the bank because you've been summoned in to try to work out some sort of payment plan that's somewhat digestible, um, that you and your children and your children's children will be paying for the rest of your life. And the president of the bank meets you in the lobby and says, I have, I have good, miraculous, amazing news for you. Your debt has been paid for. You are debt free. Your five million bucks been paid. You're like blown away. I mean, the, 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 the weight that is lifted off of your shoulders is, is immense. You can't believe it. You're, you've been staying up at night. This has been infecting all of your life, worrying about how in the world you're ever going to pay this back. And now the debt is gone. That's part of the gospel, a great part of the gospel. But it's better than that. It's not just that your debt has been erased. It's that the same person who paid off your debt also deposited $25 million in your account so that you can never, ever go into debt again. Because if the only thing the gospel does is announce to you that your debt has been taken care of, you can still walk out the door and accumulate debt. If you, you're, 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 now, you better, you better alter your spending habits or else you're going to get into the same mess you were in before. So you better watch your financial P's and Q's, okay? The gospel's so much better than that. Yes, your debt has been paid. Yes, but you have also been given a financial gift that ensures you will never be able to go into debt again. That there's more money in your account than you could ever spend in a lifetime. That's the gospel. It's not just that our sins have been forgiven, that our debt has been eliminated, but Christ has deposited his righteousness into our bankrupt account so that we can now never out the coverage of God's forgiveness, ever. We can never go into debt again. So well, may the accuser roar of sins that I have done. I know them well and thousands more. My God, he knoweth none.